You are Locked On Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Thursday, March 17th in the year 2022, and today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Today's episode, of course, like I just mentioned it, is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. It's also helpful if I'm reading the ad. I'm supposed to be reading to you instead of trying to go to the top of the dome. It always messes up. But this is a preview Thursday. Haven't had a preview Thursday in a while. NCAA tournament is underway. The Buckeyes face Loyola Chicago tomorrow. And today with us, we have Gavin Good um, does some writing and freelancing stuff for the Chicago Tribune. And I'm glad he's here because he can help us learn, learn more about Ohio State's next opponent. Gavin, how you doing, man? I'm great, Jay. Thanks for bringing me on. Um, you know, I think this is going to be one of the most exciting matchups of the opening round. And, uh, you know, I, I saw that uh, some Buckeyes fans on Twitter didn't seem too pleased to be drawing Loyola. Um, I can understand why they wouldn't uh, be feeling too excited. Loyola is a pretty good team, so I'm excited to break them down a little bit. Yeah, they're a good team, exciting team. They were in the Final Four, I believe, a few years ago. Um, Sweet 16, I do believe, last year. I did see a little nerd note that the past three tournament appearances that they've had, they've won two games in all of those tournaments, at least two games. So this is a team that's had success once they get there. They're here again this year. What has been the story of this year's Loyola Chicago, Loyola Chicago Ramblers? Yeah, well, I think there was a huge question when Porter Moser left after last season and took the Oklahoma job, which obviously was a big deal for him um, after really building Loyola into – you know, one of the nation's most impressive mid-major programs. And, you know, coming in, Drew Valentine, first-year head coach, they hired him. He was only 29 years old. Um, he has since turned 30. Uh, but as as far as Division One coaches go, that's really young. I'm pretty sure he's still the youngest coach mm -hmm. in men's Division One basketball. And really, Drew has hit the ground running. Um, he was on – he had some past experience uh, with the Ramblers as an assistant. I believe he also was an assistant for Tom Izzo. Um, at Michigan State, where his brother, of course, Denzel Valentine, was a star player for a while. Um, but really, Drew has had a lot of success this season. He knew this team. He was able to convince a lot of Ramblers players um, who may have gone pro or wrapped up their careers uh, to come back, kind of similarly to how another team I write about, Illinois, uh, was able to do the same with guys like Trent Frazier and Demonte Williams. You saw guys like Lucas Williamson, Ahir Ugwak. Uh, decide to come back, and it has really boosted the Ramblers um, this season. You know, they are um, a team that probably should have won the Missouri Valley outright. Uh, they had some losses um, where it, it basically bumped them into a must-win game in the last game of the regular season at Northern Iowa. Um, Valley was pretty decent this year. You know, not, not, it doesn't uh, hold a candle to the Big Ten, but uh, – Loyola lost that game at Northern Iowa and was forced to, you know, kind of win uh, the Valley Tournament to erase any doubts about whether they'd be in the NCAA Tournament um, because Loyola was a, a pretty a pretty big bubble team. You know, it seemed like uh, most of the analysts had them just on the outside looking in uh, before the Missouri Valley Tournament, played really well three days in St. Louis and um, beat Drake in the MVC title game, which... Um, was kind of revenge for two losses to Drake during the regular season. Either of those wins uh, would have boosted Loyola's resume a little bit more. Um, but but really, this is an experienced team. They play really good defense. Um, they don't, beside, besides Lucas Williamson, who's good for about 15 points a game, uh, one issue is they don't really have, um, you know, a defined scoring um, hierarchy. Like, Loyola has a lot of guys who can score on any given night. They don't always have guys who step up to get it done, um, and that can cost them. But I think this is a team that, you know, Ohio State fans are right to be hesitant about drawing. Um, they're not a team that's going to be 
you know, um, nervous in the big lights or in the big moments. Um, I don't think they'll bring a ton of fans out to Pittsburgh. I think Ohio State will have a huge advantage in that regard, but there will definitely be some Rambler fans. Um, they wear these maroon and gold scarves, um, which uh, kind of make Loyola fans pretty distinguishable from other fans. So you'll probably see some random people scarved up in that arena. Uh, but I think this should be a, a really exciting first-round matchup, one of the most um, you know, exciting matchups of Friday for sure. You know there are those mid-majors out there, and you've mentioned it so well, that there's been mid-majors that you see their name, maybe a Wyoming, or there's some other schools out there, maybe, maybe like they play good basketball, but they're still a mid-major. We can look past them. We can almost sleepwalk through this game. You can't do that with this team. The Ramblers are a good basketball team, and I mentioned it, I think, a couple of days ago. Just because they have that mid-major title because of the conference they're in, that does not mean they are a mid-major caliber basketball team. The Ramblers are good. They play good basketball. And by them winning 25 games this year, that says a lot about them and how consistently they play good basketball when they're on the court. Absolutely. They're a pretty consistent team. Um, you know, like I said, they – they are liable to have a bad shooting night and lose. Like they had a, a pretty surprising home loss in late January to Missouri State where they just didn't really get it done offensively, um, you know, lost at Drake. Um, but, I mean, if you look at metrics, you know, this is a team that stands up pretty well. They're 24th in Ken Palm coming in. You, you don't expect a 24 team in Ken Palm to be a 10 seed. Um, mm -hmm. so Not at all. Last year, Loyola kind of feels like they're underseeded. Um, even though they don't look at themselves like a mid-major, they kind of are in this weird area of getting some national respect while still not feeling that respect from the committee. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you saw in the selection show, I think it was Seth Davis right away predicted a Loyola win. Um, I know Seth Davis was kind of letting some, some picks just fly in the moment. Um, but, you know, this is not a team to take lightly. Um, and let's see, I'm looking at Ken Palm right now. Loyola, they're pretty good defensively. They're the 22nd ranked team in adjusted defensive efficiency. Um, offensively, they're not quite as strong, but they are 42. Um, let's see. I don't know quite where Ohio State is on that. They're actually – Ohio State's 32 in Ken Palm. Um, so, you know, where Ohio State lags defensively um, is perhaps where Loyola can take advantage of the Buckeyes um, and get some easy baskets. They run a pretty uh, – an offense that I'm told is a little complex and hard to grasp. So some yeah. guys who transferred in, like Chris Knight um, for Loyola, took a little time to get used to things. Um, but, you know, they're a team that really has a lot of guys that just are able to hurt you. Like Ryan Schwieger is a guy. Uh, Marquise Kennedy missed a bunch of games because of an injury but came back for the Missouri Valley Tournament. He's a piece um, who could be an X factor for this team if they're able to, to you know, get him going. He's – He's kind of been off and on all season, uh, but I think some of that has been due to injury. Um, Knight, another player that I just mentioned, he's he's got, um, you know, he's about 6'7". He can score inside. He can hit shots from outside. He's pretty uh, a pretty good decision maker and pretty efficient with the ball. And, uh, you know, even a guy like Keith Clemens uh, is a vet who hasn't, you know, scored a lot this year, uh, but gives them a lot of intangibles and uh, like I said earlier, he's one of those guys that has a lot of experience and can help some of the guys who haven't been on this stage, you know, feel comfortable. We're here with Gavin Good from, from the Chicago Tribune right here on Locked on Buckeyes. Look, you've been talking about all these players and the contrib contributions they've given and some guys transferring in and learning the complex offense. Let's go to the top. You've mentioned it before, averaging about 15 points a game. Lucas Williamson, I think he's going to be key for numerous reasons, not only because of the kind of player that he is, but Ohio State's issues on defense, you talked about briefly, he could kind of take advantage of that. He also averages five rebounds and three assists a game. What kind of player is Lucas Williamson? Yeah, Lucas Williamson is a player who, you know, he's got all the intangibles that you need to be the leader of a team and be dynamic where he's at the top of a scouting report for the other guys. But it's kind of like it's a matter of are you going to slow him down or are you going to shut him down? It, it might be he's a tough guy to shut down. You know, there's been a few games where he's been held under double digits um, and he's had a couple bad shooting nights, but it's a rarity. Um, you know, I, I think that 
Lucas is a guy who kind of is synonymous with what it means to be a Loyola Rambler. Uh, you walk in Gentile Arena and his name is said anytime, it's getting a big round of applause. They love Lucas uh, in Chicago. He's actually from Chicago, uh, former star Whitney Young. Um, he was upset that Whitney Young lost in the state finals uh, this weekend. Um, he mentioned that on Sunday. Uh, but he's a really good kid. Uh, he's a player who can score. Uh, he can shoot the three. Uh, I believe he's shooting about 30, just under 40% from yeah. three-point range this season. Um, but really, he's tough when, when he gets to the basket. You know, he can score in a variety of ways. Um, he's not uh, afraid of guards who are bigger than him. And he's actually 6'4", so he can kind of hang with Ohio State's big guards. I'm thinking he will be probably the Buckeyes' toughest matchup. It should definitely be, you know, their number one priority uh, as far as containing Loyola offensively. How is he or how does he get his teammates involved while he is going through the flow and putting the ball in the basket himself? Yeah, Lucas has great vision. And the other thing about him is he's played with a lot of these guys for a long time. So you look at him and a guy like Ahir Uguak, they have great unspoken chemistry. Um, he's good at finding guys who are cutting to the hoop. Um, he, he has great handles. So, you know, if you double team Lucas, uh, it, it's probably a, a, a good strategy, uh, but you got to be careful that he, do, he doesn't break it. Um, and, uh, you know, Loyola has not a ton of guys who are huge paint presences, but they do have a lot of guys who Lucas can feed the ball to and they're confident ball handlers themselves. So they can take a, a quick couple of dribbles um, or, you know, pull up for a jumper. Um, and, and so he, he is in that creator role. Um, I think he's averaging about three something assists per game. Um, you know, he, he's definitely, um, a creator and the main source of that attack. Um, but like I said, you know, it does kind of run through Lucas, but there's a lot of guys who pitch in on, you know, a varying basis. After Lucas Williamson, who would you say is the next leader on the team or next guy that would be the next guy to really be the next second leading scorer for Loyola on Friday, if you're making a prediction about the points that might be put up. Yeah, well, man, it's tough to call Loyola's points prediction. So, but this one kind of is, is easier than normal because there's one guy in this game who has a lot of extra motivation, and it's Braden Norris, who's from the Columbus suburbs. And he actually statistically is Loyola's second leading scorer. He's averaging just over 10 points a game. Um, he's a guy who's shooting – you know, the three ball at 43% this season, very capable shooter, um, doesn't have quite the size um, that uh, some of Loyola's other factors do have. Uh, but he, he talked about, you know, uh, all his friends back home are Ohio State fans. He's from Hilliard, which I don't know a mm -hmm. ton about the Ohio suburbs of Columbus, but it does look like a suburb on Google Maps. Um, <laughs> um, but Norris is motivated coming into this game. He's a guy who's who's hit some really big shots for Loyola. He's also a guy who I'm expecting to not be afraid of the moment. Um, you know, he was not a part of that 2018 Final Four run, but he was a big part of things last season. Um, and, or actually, he could have been a part. No, I believe he transferred. He, I believe he was at Oakland uh, when Loyola made the Final Four and then came in afterwards. But, you know, after that sit-out year, he was a big deal for them last year. Um, he was an, on the NBC's all-newcomer team and has really been a big addition for them. And Drew Valentine in keeping, you know, this momentum rolling forward for Loyola. Another guy who could really have an impact is Ryan Schwieger. Um, just another guy uh, at Loyola who can score in a variety of ways. Um, and, uh, you know, it just kind of makes – there are multiple. So, you know, the thing about Loyola is – you could really focus in on on Williamson, but it might be a little. T it might it might not be worth it as much as it is. You know, kind of trying to make sure you take a detailed approach here. Uh, Schrieger's got a lot of size. He's another guy who's a pretty capable shooter, um, and he actually transferred in this season as well uh, from Princeton. Who's that? Loyal has another Ivy League transfer from Dartmouth, and Chris Knight, who I uh, profiled for the trip earlier this season. Beyond him being a great guy. Uh, he's a really efficient player who can score inside, who can hit good jumpers um, and can take the three. Um, he is coming off a torn Achilles that held him mm. out all of last season. So he hasn't been quite as physically dynamic as he 
probably was against Dartmouth, but it was also a little bit of a step up in competition for him in the Valley. Um, so, you know, Loyola has a lot of guys who are capable of stepping up to be that second scorer. Uh, if you need a prediction, I'm going with Norris uh, to step up and, you know, hit double digits and, and possibly really cause some 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 problems from behind the arc. I'm looking at some of the guys that are going to be, definitely be on the court on Friday. You got 6'4", Lucas Williamson, 6'0", Braden Norris, Ryan Schwieger. I think I said that correctly, 6'7". I hear Ugwak, 6'7". I've been working on that one for a while in my head. I was like, how am I going to get his name out correctly. I'm glad you said it a few times for me. Uh, Marcus Marquise Kennedy, 6'1", Chris Knight, 6'7", Tate Hall, 6'6". You got to get down to Jacob Hudson, who averages only 12 and a half minutes a game. So he's going, going to go to court, but the minutes aren't going to be there. He's 6'10", 240. This might play into Ohio State's wheelhouse because Ohio State and Zed Key, not sure if he's not sure his status, Kyle Young, not sure if his status. Kyle Young, 6'8", Zed Key, I believe 6'10", 6'10", 250. Now, you do have Joey Brunk, who's about 6'11", 250 himself. But then you have EJ Liddell, who's, what, 6'6", 240. The height that Ohio State probably won't have is very similar to what Loyola is going to have on Friday. With Loyola's lack of height, consistent height on the court, does that hurt them in rebounding? Yes, it does. Um, and it's something that they can get away with a little bit in the Valley. And I think Ohio State absolutely has to own the boards in this one. And it's, it's really where the Ramblers are vulnerable, um, against guys like, you know, e this could even be a game where a guy like Joey Brunk, you know, who hasn't done, hasn't been, you know, super effective all the time, uh, could really step up. You know, I think, I think Loyola is really going to struggle if Zed, it, I don't know how likely Zed Key is to go. Uh, not sure, man. Not, not sure. sure. I think if Zed is able to go, uh, you know, I think that could tip the uh, the scales in Ohio State's favor for sure. Um, you know, it might be a guy like Ugwak on EJ. Um, Ugwak's a really good defender, uh, but EJ is going to give anyone problems. Um, yeah. but, you know, in, in terms of star power and playmaking, the, the advantage here absolutely goes to Ohio State. Um, you know, I would worry if I'm the Buckeyes, if, if you guys don't get off to a great start, um, if shots aren't falling in the first half, uh, Loyola is going to punish you for that. Um, and if you also turn over the ball, um, you know, frequently, if you give them any easy buckets, they're they're going to use that and, you know, get back to the other end, going to use that as motivation, lock in on defense. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I think Malachi Branham is, is a guy I've been super impressed with, especially yeah. as the season has gone on. You know, Illinois had no answer for him in Champaign. Um you know, I think he's just going to be a huge challenge. Uh, I'm not sure if it'll be Williamson on him, uh, but if it is, that will be a fantastic matchup. Williamson's a great defender, uh, but Branham is is really a special talent. Um, and, and so the other thing I think that I'm not sure how likely Kyle Young is to play, um, but Kyle Young is a guy who really uh, looks like the kind of player that, you know, Loyola could it, it, it could be a key, you know, if Young is able to really assist and, and be that third or second scorer for Ohio State, I'm not sure Loyola has the firepower to match that at the other end. Man, it's weird, man. This situation with the injuries for Ohio State has been weird all year. Kyle Young, you've mentioned concussion. Not sure what's going to happen with him. Uh, Chris Holtman is being very tight-lipped with the information that he has, which I appreciate and I understand, especially in college. You don't have to dump all the information out there for you. Uh, Zed Key, not sure he could have played in the Big Ten tournament, but they saw fit for him to not play in that game. Then you got Michi Johnson, who's what, technically he's a sophomore, but I think he's a freshman because last year's eligibility didn't, year didn't count. Michi Johnson, the backup point guard, he could be somebody to hit deep threes to kind of keep Ohio State in the game if needed. Injuries are crazy. It could be some way, though, that Loyola – kind of wears out Ohio State because Ohio State's legs have been tired. They've been playing a lot of games very closely at the end of the schedule, end of the season. And then if they just play their basketball, if the Ramblers just play their brand of ball, and Ohio State's legs continue to be tired, not just because of the games they play at the end of the year in a short amount of time, but because they've played more minutes due to injuries, that could be a recipe for success for the Ramblers in the first round of this tournament. Absolutely. I fully, I fully agree with that. Um, 
you know, also just the kind of games Loyola gets into. They like to get into these, you know, kind of low scoring games in the 60s. Um, and, you know, almost all the games they've lost are, are games where, you know, they have to match another team bucket for bucket, um, you know, jumper for jumper. Uh, you, you keep that game in the 60s and Loyola might be coming out on top. Um, you know, I, I think that, you know, maybe Ohio State will have benefited from an early exit in the Big Ten tournament. It, it definitely feels like a situation where Loyola is trending in the right direction and Ohio State not so much. Yeah. Um, but I'm not sure how much stock we should put into that because, you know, the tournament is a different beast. Um, it really is about matchups. It really is about, uh, you know, whether guys like Key and Young are going to be able to go that day. Um, and I, I think, you know, maybe maybe Ohio State fans weren't happy with the Big Ten tournament, but, uh, you know, you win a game like this, and that's kind of in the rear view, and you're thinking about two-seed Villanova and your chances to get to the Sweet 16. So I think that Holtman has a good opportunity here to really, um, you know, if you drop a good game plan against the Ramblers, you, you got a great shot to, to be in a Sweet 16. This is true. I'm going to leave you with this final question. It's about Drew Valentine. Wanted to hit it earlier, but we hit so much on the players. It was just too good to deviate from that conversation. What do you think the impact on this team has been with their coach being so young? I feel like, you know, Lucas kind of talked about it on Sunday. You can have a different degree of communication when you already feel like your coach is one of you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Not to say that, not to to minimize Drew's experience as a coach, because he he has great experience, um, you know, leading up into this job. But it, it, he just knew this team really well already. It, even though Loyola added in a bunch of transfers, um, Drew's seamlessly integrated those guys into the team, and he really seems to be able to connect and motivate players on an individual basis. He can really relate with players. Um, he made a joke about how. He, uh, you know, was wearing joggers and dunks and not like a suit the other day <laughs> like other coaches. Yeah. Um, he He's really approachable. He's, he's kind of a – everyone likes to be a player's coach, but that's an accurate label for Drew Valentine. He he really is close with this team, um, and yet he is not – he doesn't have some sort of big ego for an up-and-comer. Um, he's very focused. He knows he puts so much pride in, in the Valley and uh, you could tell that not getting it done in the regular season um, was something that really bothered him and this team. Um, so I think that Valentine, I think he has a really, really bright future in the coaching profession. Um, and, you know, you never know what happens uh, in this tournament. If Loyola puts together some more magic in March, I mean, suddenly they might just be trying to hang on to Drew, um, you know, kind of like they were with Porter Moser. I think that, uh, you know, Loyola, has another great coach on their hands, I think. Good to hear. Last one. Well, not really a question, but it. not going to lie. It is a question. Who do you think wins? I knew you were going to ask that. Um, <laughs> I've been struggling with this one, man. I've been struggling with this game. Um, you know, seeing Loyola up close, seeing Ohio State up close. I'll be honest, they're two teams I really like. Yeah. Um, and if they weren't playing each other, I think there'd be a great chance. I had both of them in the Sweet 16. Um, I don't love this matchup for Loyola. Uh, I don't like it for Ohio State. That said, I think, you know, if if Young comes back, I think it's going to be a little too much for the Ramblers um, at the defensive end to handle. Um, I hope they're not listening to this. Uh, but if they are, then I'll just be another expert who doubted them. And they'll be out there to prove me wrong like everybody else. So I'll, I'll give Ohio State a four-point win in this game. I think it's going to be really close. And I think Ohio State will just have a little bit too much, um, you know, offensively for Loyola to, to reel in. My prediction is being delayed because luckily I have one more day to, to, to do the <laughs> show with this being on Thursday. The four point win for Ohio State's huge. My, I am personally waiting to hear more on Kyle Young in Zed Key. Might not hear anything until right before game time. But so that's kind of where my thoughts are right now. Just similar to you, if Kyle Young, is, if Kyle Young or Zed Key play one of the two, I think Ohio State wins by four, five, six. I mean, it, it could be that kind of game. If they don't, I'm going with the Ramblers. I might make my prediction and still not know the injury, injury status of both players, which is fine. 
But luckily, when you're the host, you have one more day so you can delay things a little bit. Gavin, this has been a fun show. It has been a good show, as your last name is. Um, where can people read your articles, follow along with you on Twitter during the game if they want to see what's going through your mind as the game is going, g- game is being, being played? Absolutely. You can find me at It's All Good on Twitter. There's a lot of hyphens in my username, but if you just type in It's All Good, it'll, it should come up. Um, You can find my work at the Chicago Tribune. Uh, I write features about men's basketball, mostly Illinois and Loyola. Um, You can also find my work at the Associated Press, the News Gazette in Champaign, and the Times of Northwest Indiana. A lot of prep stuff there. Uh, So I'm kind of all over the place. Yes, you are. Guys, you can follow me on Twitter at jsteven07. One more day until the Buckeyes go dancing with the Ramblers. It's going to be a great matchup. I hope you're ready. And I know the game's at 12-15. I hope. You told your boss you're not going to be working around that time, give give you about two hours because this game is going to get all of your attention. It's going to be a fun one to watch. 